Yeah, moving on to like we'll we'll talk Ty J Spear here because I know you love him. You loved him pre-draft. You loved him post-draft. Yep. I've been fine on Ty J Spear. I actually liked him a little more pre-draft than post-draft because he doesn't. For me, he didn't profile strictly as like a workhorse capable back at the right. next level. I thought he did well with a good amount of volume at Tulane. He was kind of the main manifesto there in the offense at times he was really productive i liked him as a player i think he compliments derrick henry actually a lot if you do want to give derrick henry a little bit of a break at times which maybe at this point if they want him to survive the season they'll have to spears is a good compliment for him i think he can do a little bit of everything that derrick henry might struggle with and for that reason he might be a guy who sneaks into couple lineups this year, especially when the pa- only pass catchers on that offense here are really Chig, Chigozi McConquo and Traylon Burks, which in the event either one of them gets injured like Trail Burks was a lot last year, they're going to be leaning on that run game, especially if they do have a rookie quarterback in there over Ryan Tannehill at some point. And Tiger Spears could look good. But my problem with taking Tiger Spears outside of the third round, there isn't a ceiling while Derrick Henry is there. And with post-draft them coming out and saying they drafted him knowing he doesn't have ACLs, and this is a player who should be counting his steps in the league, I don't know if there's going to be that point where I'm holding on long-term in the hopes that Spears could develop into that guy behind Derrick Henry in the event he's traded, cut, injured, you know, the top comes off. So for that reason, I'm a lot lower than Spears for you. I think he's fine if you prefer him to Roshan or Bigsby, but I think because of his long-term concerns, I'm taking him before Roshan and Bigs. I'm taking him after Roshan and Bigsby, but he's. I'll take him before we're then gonna take the absolute dart on Evans and Tucker. So that's right where I have Tajay Spears, and that's early third for me. My caveat with Spears is always gonna be he's essentially in my mind the Khalil Herbert of this class. He's being drafted. Mm, People aren't expecting as much about him, but he's a really good runner of the football. We don't know how much he can offer outside of that. The injury concerns are obviously real. In my opinion, the NFL tells us they don't care about it. I'm not going to care about it that much, but I am drafting Spears in the anticipation that Derrick Henry is 29 years old. If he gets hurt, People are going to do what they've done every single year and overpay for Derrick Henry's backup. You know, we had, uh, there was times where his backups have been going for second round picks. People know that that offense is going to run the ball. If they're drafting Spears, they're going to trust him as the backup, in my opinion. So almost any Spears that I am drafting is exclusively to flip moving forward, which is why I won't ask anybody to draft him as as their running back four or running back five uh, in this class. But that's where I think, you know, uh, again, you're taking a swing at a guy who can increase in value. And if Henry goes down, you're probably looking at like potentially getting first round picks for Spears. I think he's a special runner. You know, he's really creative in space uh, and he can create space where there isn't space to be had. Um, you know, it's it's kind of what Henry does, but Henry does it as obviously a uh, physical freak um, in one of the freakiest runners in football. But I think Spears just has a really good path to return first round value and you know getting him late second where he pretty consistently goes at this point it's just hard to to pass that up for me yeah i think i think we're a little off here i think if you at any point ever got a first out of tajay spears you see here 510 200 out of tulane uh i would be surprised but day two i mean that's good to see he was the only couple backs snuck in there he found his way there any final final name any guy you want to talk about and then we can we can get out of here it's been a healthy hour I'm really liking, uh, I'm mostly picking him up on waivers. He's most, he's going undrafted in a lot of my leagues, but Dorian Thompson Robinson, like just taking him and stashing him, you know, on the, uh, on the taxi squad. If there's a quarterback in this class that profiles similarly to Deshaun Watson in the sense that they have a big arm in their athletic, it's probably DTR, um, especially at his current cost of free 99, you know, some fab dollars. There's upside there, and there's a potential that he enters the season as the quarterback too there. And if he does that, and anything happens to Deshaun Watson, anything, any new legal stuff comes up with him, you know, maybe you walk your way into a quarterback one here. Um, I like Tune. I would draft Tune. I would pick up DTR off of waivers just because Tune I think has a clearer path to having some production this year. Um, but DTR is a guy that I like picking up super late. Maybe maybe like four twelve. You're on the clock. You don't know who to pick. Tune's gone. Take DTR. You know, and just see what you get out of it. Um, I keep seeing like Brenton Strange go ahead of him, and it just doesn't make sense to me. I just don't see the Strange upside pick. there. 
Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit of a strange pick. Um, and, and DTR just has a, a lot of upside there. Um, to If things go wrong for Deshaun Watson, they could go very, very right for DTR. Yeah, really what it boils down to. No, he's saying Jonathan Mingo's who he's stashing. Well, there's a big difference between the 4-12 we're talking and Mingo, who's going in the second round here. Uh, thank you, man. We appreciate you. And yeah, DTR. I like, I like this stab here, purely a backup, but like, I think he could end up being a very solid backup, kind of like a Tyrod yeah. Taylor in that sense of a, just a guy who can keep a job. He, there was a lot of buzz. A lot of GMs actually liked this guy. Um, he went a little earlier in day three. So it indicates to me, he probably will be the backup here for Cleveland. And we like to stash those in super flex. If you have a short league, Clinton Toon and Dorian Thompson Robinson probably don't make your draft at all. Like if you guys have 20 or less, kind of a glorified keeper league. But if you're playing yep. in leagues that are 25 to 35 or more, if you're a sicko, um, DTR is worth the stash here. The only other quarterback kind of here is maybe Jaron Hall. There's he's a, he's a little older of a prospect, uh, but he's serviceable at times. Um, he's a little bit of athleticism. He's got a decent arm. Uh, again, production is okay with BYU. Kirk Cousins, uh, we don't know exactly his future. If Jaron Hall is a backup or there's an injury, again, this is, we're talking only super flex deep. If you want to stash this guy as well, I'll throw it out there. He's got Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, which is, yeah. and TJ Hawkinson. So that's quite, quite the receiving core. 